Potraca is, it's a very, it has a very profound meaning. Traga in Creole means troubles. It is referencing trauma and troubles, so it has become extremely fitting that we've continued to build it this last year. I've always interpreted it as um, just really like our individual experiences, our trauma, how we hold it, um, how it manifests within our body and the way we talk, the way we relate to one another. Whether you're from this country or that country, um, trauma is a universal thing. Traka to me means like, uh, like when you're shattered. Right, you're like into pieces, and you have to pull the pieces together, right? And that's that's the like a you know traumatic thing, like pulling it back together. So yeah, that's what traka is. My name is Jean Apollon, and I started Jean Apollon Expressions. I think it was 2006 that we started to work on a few projects, freelance projects. And my dancers were like, why don't you just start a company? Kaka means trouble in Haitian Creole. Sometimes my mother when we're in the house or my grandmother is working around when they were alive, when my grandmother was alive, sometimes when we're bothering her too much, it's like, you know, so for me, I grew up in that word of traka, and I've seen people use it also to very strongly in Haiti when they see trouble coming in. Even when the earthquake was happening, we all felt like it was a traka because we felt like it was more trauma into our lives. My dance journey start on a Sunday. I was six or seven years old and I saw African-American woman named Lavinia Williams teaching a dance class on TV. I'm like stuck on the TV and opening my eyes and trying to watch this woman teaching dance and talking about Haitian dance. I said, this is what I really wanna do. When my father noticed that I was doing that every Sunday, he came and shut up the TV. And he said, you know what, dance is not for you. This is not for you. My mom was already gone because my mom was already living in Boston. Jobs were very hard to get. So my mother ended up moving to Boston. And I was in Haiti pretty much dancing by myself. My family didn't know anything. They thought I was going to volleyball practice. Every time they asked me, why did you come home so late, you know, after school? I'm like, no, I'm playing volleyball. But I was pretty much doing my splits and trying to get my value going or trying to get my body moving. So they sent an uncle of mine to spy on me, came out of the dance class. So my uncle said, okay, let's go home because your dad is waiting for you. So that day I got disciplined very harshly because my dad was very adamant of me not dancing, but also of me disrespecting his wish. Put the discipline on, on Wednesday I went back to dance class and had a ball because I felt like that was my calling and nobody's gonna stop me. And my father was completely <laughs> livid. He, but this is the first time my father was so upset that he looked at me and he's like, okay, I'm not going to kill you. You can keep on dancing. Because he, I think he felt like I'm determined and he couldn't do anything about it. So came to United States, continued dancing. I had a one-year uh, scholarship at Harvard Radcliffe program while I was graduating at Cambridge Range in Latin. And after that, I auditioned for the Alvin Ailey three times. I keep on training. And the third year, the last name that they call was my name on a full scholarship to go to Alvin Ailey. For me, I think that was a dream who kind of pushed me to, to know that a young boy from Haiti, from a country that they always say it's a poor country, but for me, it's an impoverished country, that you can make anything. And from now, from then, I'm still dancing. The origin of Traka, it's through my trauma that I witnessed when I was living in my home country of Haiti. Because growing up in Haiti, I, I had to deal with a lot of losses, but also not only my own family, close family loss, but even regular people in the street, seeing them being shot or seeing them dead in the street. And those kind of trauma really asked me to speak about the trauma that I witnessed and the trauma I've seen other people around of me witness. But when I came here in the United States, I've seen a lot of trauma also too, with drug addictions, with 
guns, you know, shooting every other day or with bomb exploding every other day, I felt like it was another level of trauma. And when I finished working a few projects prior to Traka, I felt like this is the time. I always wanted to talk about my trauma because my father was killed pretty much in Haiti. We were in the house and they were trying to kill us also too. And me and my family had to go into hiding for months and months. I remember what I was going through when I saw my father's body parts coming around the neighborhood and people are running and chanting with, with his body and we couldn't even find a piece of his body to even pay respect to him. So I always wanted to talk about that. And some people said, why don't you write a book? I'm like, mm, writing a book is not the deal for me. The deal is really maybe talking about it or maybe moving about it, like dancing about it. When I started this project three years ago, I felt like it was time. My name is Nadia Milad Isa, and I've been dancing with Jean for a year and a half now. My name is Lonnie, and I have been working with Jean since 2016. My name is IJ Chen. I also go by Jia Yun. Um, and I've been dancing with Jean since 2018. My name is Mkabisi Kokeni, and I have been a dancer with the Jean Apron Expressions for close to five years now. My name is Meg McGrath. I am currently the executive director and a company dancer with Jean Off Alone Expressions. Um, I have danced and worked with Jean for many years. It started back in 2010. So Jean first started talking about Traka in Haiti. Um, it was during our summer dance institute. We had just arrived in Port-au-Prince and come from the airport and we were driving through the city streets. And while looking around, Jean saw and pointed out um, just the number of people on the streets, living by the road, um, needing help. And I think especially thinking more about how the kids work to get to us every day at the summer program. They walk hours and hours at times. They come having not eaten for sometimes hours, days, um, and they have so many needs and yet show up in really amazing ways to just dance. And I think there are so many layers of support that the kids could use if they were given access to help, um, especially around mental health. And so Jean, for years, was talking about the, the hope that he has to create a, a big evening-length production about just that trauma, the need for mental health, and um, how we can work together in a community to dance, listen to music, and find a way to heal. And I felt like Traka will give the community at large a way of understand trauma, but also in a way to deal with it. Because a lot of the time people are like, how can you deal with trauma? To me, it's not trying to accept trauma. Is just trying to live with it day by day and understand whatever happened is not your fault. I would say we first started trying to think about who we could turn to for support around mental health. Um, Jean and myself were artists and educators and we wanted to know from experts what we could start doing to begin this big work. Uh, Dr. Gerda Nicholas, who is a Haitian American uh, mental health doctor down in Miami was a huge support for us from the very beginning. She was a, a big resource for us in asking for, you know, how can we very consciously and safely move into the space of trauma. Five, six, seven, and... Right before the pandemic hit, we were literally at Jacob's Pillow, which is a dance retreat slash dance, it's like a magical place. And we were working on Traka. That was our like three day residency in the mountains where we were really, we were literally living together and, you know, and creating together. And it was amazing. That was March 5th, 6th, 2020. And we came back and everything shut down. Coronavirus just hit very, very loud. 
just like the earthquake that hit in Haiti 2010. So I felt like there were a relationship of, of continuing trauma and a understanding that the global world, we are connected. And we stayed connected. We kept dancing. Um, we, as an organization, Jean Apollon Expressions, found any way we could to continue working with our dancers, paying our dancers for their artistry. And Traka is such a fitting project to have had to kind of lean into during the pandemic. We had some rehearsals where everyone was on Zoom. We had some hybrid where we had some dancers in the studio with Jean and then a few of us on Zoom, and it was always messy. There was stuff going wrong left and right, and yet we kept moving through. The mass, um, obviously, you know, is necessary, but breathing physically <laughs> in masks is really hard. Even just walking fast is really hard. And then dancing, and especially like, you're not just walking around, like your head is going everywhere. And that's been very difficult, is breathing and performing in real time. I think rehearsal's one thing, but performing in real time, you're going 150%. And so it didn't really stop us in that momentum, but definitely trying to navigate everyone's comfortability. We definitely check in, we talk about our traumas, we build that relationship. It's not like we're going onto the stage not having doing that work ourselves. It, it really is a family and it, and it really is that, that kinship, right? Because we're going through trauma every day right now. And so it's a lot to also put yourself in a performance that is focused on that. I just noticed that the movements in Traka became very, very specific and very gestural. And that to me was really powerful because when you get specific about trauma, it wasn't just like, oh, okay, we were talking about trauma, we were talking about specific things. I go next to Boston City hospitals. I go to a lot of places around Boston too and just see the way homelessness is here in America and how it is in Haiti. All this process for me, I like to look at it very strongly, analyze it, think about it, and come and tell my you know, story to my dancers and say, let's try to move. Because I seen this guy was moving like he had an itch, but he wasn't, he didn't have no scar on him, but he kept on itching himself. So I said, let's go about that. Let me see how you can translate that movement. Seeing all this process of life, of social norms, and trying to understand them and trying to talk about it. And from the talk, movement will come. It's a lot of ways of processing you know, my, my, my work. Because I feel like if we're talking about social issues, you have to be part of, you know, community. You have to be part of, you know, being on the street and walk on the street and connect with the people. Because you cannot talk about social issues if you're not really connected to your own self and also to other people. I said to my dancers, go in the street and see whatever any addicted person, homeless person who's dealing with mental illness, see what they're doing and try not to emulate because sometimes trying to copy or trying to mimic somebody can be very derogatory. So I just said, go and study the street for me and see how people go when it comes to mental stress, when they're dealing with things. And I tell them to come up with, and when Nadia was doing it, I think I said to Nadia, why don't you try to really see yourself? Just like, you know, take a mirror and see yourself while you're doing the movement. And Nadia started to really work in that process of looking into the mirror and to see what they will come with. So to me, I felt like each dancer you see doing some kind of movement, it's really them trying to be connected to the real world, like I said to you, being connected to, to, to reality. My name is Val Jotti. I am an electronic music composer uh, merging voodoo, uh, voodoo culture with uh, electronics. And I'm the composer for the group. So I create all the sounds, all the music. When I met Val many, many years ago, over 10 years ago, I was like, wow, this woman is magic. The way she plays the music, the way she creates. And I said, one day I would like to work with her. And I think, uh, maybe nine years ago, she collaborated in something very small with us, and my dancers fell in love. Megan was always like, oh, Jean, we need to do bigger project with Val. Traka, I think Val was like, no, Jean, let me take on this 
journey with you because I want to make sure that I create everything that you're thinking, everything that you're processing. I would like to process that into that music and make it happen. Working with Jean is like organic. <laughs> One time, I start talking to Val and I already said, you know, this is what I want to hear. It's like many days of sitting down inside of her house in her living room and being around her instruments and she started creating and I'm like, no, 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 no. There is a piano that I would like to have under this. Oh, there is a violin I want. On. There is a drum that I would like to have. There is a voice of Haitian, you know, m you know, merchants selling their goods around the street that I would like to have under this. The movements are this, but I want fire. You know, for this one, okay, the movements are da-da-da-da, but I want w water. So I have to kind of like go back and say, okay, you know, well, in, the, in the culture, when we're talking about, you know, water, you know, we use a boom boom to boom boom to. I think after four hours, I completely pass out and Val is still working. And somehow I hear some kind of other layer and Val start laughing and I completely, you know, waking up in shock and I'm like, well, you know, what, you know, why didn't you wake me up? And Val was like, oh, honey, it's like the spirit took you to another level. It's the spirit because we both know this is beyond us. You know, we're just, you know, the, the tools, you know, we're like the fork, you know, and the knife, and then there's a stick that we have to cut. <laughs> really, it's a, it's a magic connection. And to me, she is more than just a musician. She is a miracle worker. Haitian drums, there's like, you know, we have like a family of, of drums. It's not just one. So, you know, like a congas is high and low, but, you know, for the Haitians, we have, wow, we have the kata. The kata is a kata, 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 that's why it's called, you know, kata. We have the, you know, the mama. So, like, if you could think of it as, like, you know, a family. So we have the mama, we have the kata, and then we have, you know, the papa. So the kata would be, like, the child, and then the mama, of course, the mother, and then, you know, the papa, you know, father one. So the mama, right, mama, the kata, and then the papa, so it's like a whole family right there, you know, and it's also like, um, like, um, you know, creating those parts, you know, that kind of center us, you know. So let's say you have like your mama, which is the center, you know, always, you know, and then, you know, like the father kind of gives you like a support. And then, you know, the little kid is right there, you know, behind him. So it's just, you know, like a better way to look at it, you know, you know like, a, like a family. It began the day the first white person went to Africa and began to kidnap people in Africa. They did not just sit down and let themselves be taken away. They fought. They fought all the way to the boat. They fought on the boat. They killed themselves throughout the trip. They killed themselves as they get off the boat or killed whoever was tying them up. So the fight began the day the oppression, the kidnapping, the slave mentality began to Professor Baina Bello. She is a Haitian uh, professor and uh, histor historian, and she is so like connected to the culture. So that's a, a speech that she's giving about the you know the, the history about um, Haiti. The whole piece is is traka, and traka is like the trauma, right? And the first trauma for us starts with that. It starts with being kidnapped and you know slavery and all this stuff. So yeah, that's. That's pretty much why, you know, this, it was like, this is what we need to work with because she nails it. She goes straight to the core of why we have this, this traka, this trauma, you know, the trauma started right then and there. Like the first couple words when she says, you know, when the white man came to kidnap us, that's traka. That is the, you know, real essence of traka right there. I've been through some trauma here in the United States also too, dealing with racism. I feel like racism is something that was very cancerous and something very dark that when people do it, it doesn't feel good. Even certain friends of mine in the community here, sometimes they're like, why are you going to have white people dancing for you? I'm like, darling, I would not want to repeat whatever happened to my ancestors or what's happening right now with, our, with my race. I would never want to impose it in any other people. And I would not want to repeat it for myself because I'm trying to heal myself. So for me, I feel like it was intentional choosing my dancers, and I want to continue to choose my dancers intentionally. I do not want to use my dancers as a token, for sure, because I never want it to be used as a token. Every decision that I make since I was a young kid, 
I try to be very intentional about it because I think my mom and my grandmother mostly always said, be intentional with everything that you do. And that's just why I never apologize for being me, for being an artist, for being colorful, for being black. When I went to the valley schools that I studied, a lot of the time people were like, even the teachers sometimes would tell me, oh, you know, ballet, maybe it's not for you. Maybe you should try to go to a modern company because, you know, you are, you know, black. And I'm like, I think it's for me because I can still foite, I can still jete, I can still jump and twirl around all the white boys and white girls in the school. So why can I do it? The world is many of us and many of us can do many things. And there is not a limit on anybody. The same way I don't want people to put limit on me is the same way I would not want to put limit on other people. So that's just why I feel like, you know, my mission as a choreographer, as an artistic director, is to really be global, but in a way also to, it's to really speak internationally. What I really love about this group is that you have every single race there, right? And in Vodou, Vodou is just the thing, right? Vodou says, tout moun se, se moun. Tout moun se moun, which means everybody's a body. So, you know, what I love, you know, and when, um, when I see, like, the different, you know, races, you know, doing the Haitian movement, and then you see that it's about the spirit, right? Because, you know, the Vodou tells you, tout moun se moun. So it's not about this. It's about the spirit that flows through, through you. So this, this is one of the things, you know, I love to see, you know, when everybody's moving, when IJ is doing the movement, like, wow, you know? And then, you know, of course, you know, for me, I'm like, that's Haiti, <laughs> but it's going through everybody, you know, because it's like the spirit is, goes through all of us, right? And it, it just like takes us and it moves us and it heals us and it's, you know, traka, and then, you know, healing. So yeah, yeah, that's what I love about this, you know, this uh, group. I think about, you know, my ancestors, the people who came before me, like I'm a part of them and they're a part of me and they're the reason why I have this body. Like, I'm grateful because for whatever reason, I was made, you know, I was put on this earth and I have the facility to move on all these different ways. And I, this is, you know, this was the path that I, you know, chose it was to become a dancer, it was to become a mover, and also to tell my narrative through that. And I have my ancestors thank, like, to thank for that and also my family as well. So a lot of times, like, I'll think about them. We are working with very, um, sacred rhythms, right? We're working with sometimes Igbo and Yanvalu, and these things are coming from a dance tradition that's called Ivaldu, right? And so I know I have to do things um, as a spiritual medium that grounds me more, especially in a solo that I have that is centered around the Loa or the Oricha Ogu. And so I know I have to situate myself as a Dominican person with lineage of the Congo. Certain things just hit you and so I know I have to ground myself. We don't talk about how healing is not linear. We don't talk about this process, right? And um, I just think that in this space, we're able to explore and acknowledge all of that much, much more than we were before. For Chaka, I really hope that our audiences are able to see themselves in the work or at least see the dancers moving through this piece about trauma and mental health and the need for different methods for healing and have some hope that there is a better place. A personal hope would be for some viewers to also just broaden their perspective and recognize the different ways and forms that trauma can happen and then how it can be processed. Moving and breathing is, is such a valid way for anyone to move through trauma versus I guess, pushing it out. The last piece, for example, is called L'Espoir, which is Creole for hope. I hope that they can see that they can come to a place of groundedness and hope and joy throughout all of this. They can still find that. I want people to take with them the sense of understanding of one another. Um, I want people to take the sense of um, the how to move forward. Um, and, and, and I want people to, to still continue to ask questions about things that go on um, and, and, and don't settle for trauma. Reflection and reflective uh, moments to see like, hmm, what are, the, what are the resources to healing practices and community that I have? To really lean on each other. I think it's hard to 
to really be vulnerable and ask for help. I hope that it gives, that Traka gives energy for folks to seek out those kinship and to seek out those healing practices um, because we all deserve them. I pray that they continue to stay strong and they continue to be a voice in the community because I felt like, you know, to me, I didn't know that we were gonna create a real hub, not only a dance company, but a hub of healing into our community. And I think with Traka, we kind of understanding more our mission. I hope the same way the spirit moves through the dancers and move through me, it just goes through and moves through everybody and heals, you know? And sometimes too, might like, Kah! just like grab them for a second, just to, so they can feel it. And then like healing, you know? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, you know, I, I hope they can experience. I want everybody who experienced Traka to just go home and analyze themselves and go deep into themselves and try to understand what hurts them and how they can make that hurt turn into power. Because when we let the hurt damage us, we are not being able to continue to live properly for our community, for our children, for ourselves. We are not able to really continue to, to progress. So for me, I want everybody who watch Traka or the rise who perform in Traka to really take that moment and go home and analyze themselves about how they can make their hurt turn into something positive. As a, as a healer, as a choreographer, as an artist, I see things completely different and I, you might not see it the same way I see it, but we need to really go deep inside of ourselves to know how we're gonna be able to move on in our society to make this world better. We cannot say, oh yeah, we wanna make this world better, black lives matter, every good lives matter, but we're not doing the work that we need to do deep in within ourselves to make that happen. So for me, that's what I wanna call when it comes to Traka, and that's what I wanna call to everybody around every community to just think for a moment deep inside and find your truth.